my name is Emily. And my name is Glenn, and we're from Playable Streets. Welcome to the Skylines and Storylines Drawing Workshop. First of all, we would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we live, the Wurundjeri and Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nations, and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We are very lucky to be here on land where families have created art and told stories for thousands of years. And we welcome you to this collaborative art project which starts with your drawings and ends with an interactive art exhibition at CS Gallery as part of Children's Week in October 2021. Today we're going to do a series of drawing exercises. If at any stage you want to pause the video and take more time, please do so. You can also go back and re-watch sections if you need to. Let's get started. First, I think we're going to do a bit of a body warm-up so you're ready to start drawing. So everybody, just follow my lead. We're all going to start like this, as an absolute statue. Now you're a statue in the town square and you're just very, very still. But all of a sudden, magically, your fingers start moving. Okay, everyone's fingers start moving. That's right, and everything else is still. And then your wrists start moving. Wrists and fingers, wrists and fingers. Hmm, this is strange. And then your elbows start moving, and your wrists, and your fingers. That's right, okay. The statue's starting to warm up a little bit. All right, and then your shoulders get involved. Shoulders, so you're some sort of wacky inflatable flailing arms person, <laughs> and you're just almost dancing around, but you're very still, and then your head gets involved. Head gets involved, and then it's sort of loosey-goosey. Okay, but everything else is completely still. And then your hips get involved. Your hips are there. Hips are very important in drawing, uh, so you've got to get those warmed up. All right, and then your knees. Whoop, uh, there they go. All right, knees are there. All right, your whole body's there. Your feet are there. Oh, everything's going. Everything's going completely crazy until still. Back to the statue. Okay, I'm feeling warmed up. Are you feeling warm yeah, up? Yeah, I'm really warm. All right. <laughs> okay. So now our bodies are warm, let's get started drawing. So you're going to need some coloured pencils or um, some textures, and you're going to need some paper as well. Um, I reckon about four pieces. If you need to pause the video and grab some materials, you can do that now. So for this first exercise, choose a colour, any colour. I'm going to go for purple. Okay. And all you're going to do is listen to my instructions and draw. So first of all, we're going to just draw some straight lines on our paper. Just straight lines, any way you want. Straight lines all over your beautiful piece of paper. And try drawing a really long line, as long as it can be on your piece of paper really really long line on your piece of paper and now try really short lines little short lines all over your paper try to fill in the space that you haven't filled in already little short lines and now let's try a wavy line a lovely wavy line Of different wavy lines and you can try little short wavy lines and lots of long wavy lines beautiful and now let's see if we can make an angry line what does an angry line feel like to draw an angry line What about a happy line? What does that feel like? What does that look like? Ooh. Beautiful. And what about an excited line? What's an excited line like? Is your line excited, Glenn? It is. It's moving very quickly, I think. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. All right. So now that we've done lines, I want you to find another colour. Choose another colour. Put on your paper. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to go this kind of nice aqua colour. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to draw some circles. Just circles all over. Don't worry about going over what you've done. It's going to make it even more beautiful. Make sure that you're filling up all the 
white spaces on your piece of paper and try to draw some really big circles if you can. See how big you can make them without going off your piece of paper. And now some really tiny circles, tiny, tiny circles. See how tiny your circles can be. Filling in all of that white space. The big circles and let's try a happy circle. What does a happy circle feel like? Oh yeah it's got a bit of a flourish at the end isn't it? And what about an angry circle? Oh, that feels good actually. Yes, angry circles and a very calm show that and put that up on, uh, on your wall. You could absolutely put that on your wall or you could make it into some wrapping paper oh, the next yeah. present that you give or you could cut it up and make it into little like a little notebook oh, that you that's could write great. on the back of. There's a bunch of things you could do but it's a beautiful artwork. Have you got one of those too? See? Everyone's an artist. Great work! Now we're going to start a new warm-up. It's a drawing warm up that we call Eyes Closed Cat. It's pretty simple. You close your eyes and then you draw a cat. But first, grab yourself a um, pencil or a pastel, as we have here, or a texture. Now, uh, look at your piece of paper. Look where you are. Okay. Grab it in your drawing hand. Put it on your piece of paper. Now, close your eyes and draw a cat. Okay, think about what a cat looks like. What features does a cat have? Do you know a cat? Yeah, maybe it's a cat you've got at home or maybe it's a friend's cat. You might start with its ears or you might start with its nose. You might start with its eyes and speaking of which, no peeking. The whole point of this is that you just kind of guess where all the parts of the cat Will end up. Don't forget to put lots of details in there like its whiskers and maybe the last time you saw it it was sleeping or maybe it was running away or maybe it was playing. So see if you can capture that with your drawing as well. And um, some other features of a cat maybe like its whiskers or its tail. Um, I'm guessing that my cat looks pretty good but I don't know yet because my eyes are still shut. How are you going over there Emily? Um, I'm good I'm just putting some stripes on my cat's tail. Okay well I'm done and if you need more time at this point uh, you can press pause although that might be a little bit hard because your eyes are closed so <laughs> maybe get someone else to press pause for you. Okay I think I'm ready. Okay you ready? Yep. Okay we're gonna do our big reveal. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, wow, yeah. your cat kind of looks like a fish in a bee as it's well. It's kind of, <laughs> it's a cat that's sort of collapsed in on itself. <laughs> my cat was supposed to be sleeping, but she looks very it, disheveled. It looks like awake. it's, uh, yeah, kind of playing a piano or something <laughs> like that, backwards. Um, there you go, there's your eyes closed cat. Now show it to your friends and family because they will probably have a bit of a laugh. But then, <laughs> Suggest to them that they draw eyes closed cat themselves. It's a lot of fun. It is. All right. Should we get on with the main event? Yes. All right. New piece of paper, everybody. Now, with um, a pastel or a pencil or whatever you like, we want you to draw a cross on your piece of paper to divide it into four pieces so sort of like this well yes definitely like this there we go that's perfect good work now in this top left corner here we want you to draw 
your favourite place around where you live. Now, it could be anywhere at all. It could be um, just outside your house, or it could be down the road, it could be near your school. But it's a place that you really like, and, you, and, and it's some, a place that you find very special. And we want you to just draw it. Take as much time as you like, and you can pause the video here if you like. Hard to make a choice. It is hard. I'm it's gonna have a think. Places. About mm. around where I live. Now I think I know what I'm gonna do. You know what you're gonna do? Okay. Yeah. I think I know too. It's nice if you do have a choice though, and it means there's lots of good places in your neighborhood, right? That's right, absolutely. Now there might be more than one thing in that place and you can draw that and you can add as much detail at this point as you like. Yeah, try and stay in the box because we'll need those other boxes for other things. Finished, yeah. Are you finished? Yep, I'm finished. So what I'm interested in about this place is um, drawing myself in it now. So can you find a spot? If you haven't already done it, you might have already put yourself in there. I haven't. No, I haven't either. So think about how this place makes you feel. Why is it your favourite place? How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel happy or excited or calm or peaceful or, um, I don't know, it can make you feel a whole bunch of things. Calm. Yep. So think about feel. how it makes you feel and I want you to draw yourself in that place feeling that way. Okay. So it might be the way that you place your body in that space to kind of show us how you feel. Or you just might know it. Let me show you, I drew myself on a park bench. Nice. Um, it's actually a really special park because it's got this giant tree that's right next to the bench that shades it when it's really sunny. That's beautiful. That's really nice. And all the leaves fall down. I drew myself running on a track in a park near where I live, mm -hmm. which has lots of really beautiful big trees um, and big gum trees and stuff as well. And it makes me feel really happy and alive when I'm on there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, you know what, Emily, it'd be really great if you could just write that down, that one sentence about what this place is in the next square. So just here, we're just gonna write down a little description of this drawing that we've done. This is me under the big tree in the park. I wrote, this is a park where I run it makes me happy. All right, so in this second box now. So just so underneath, just here. Underneath your first drawing. We're gonna get you to draw where you live. So it might be inside or it might be outside. 
So you might live in a house or an apartment block. So you could draw the outside of that and whatever surrounds it. Or you might want to draw the inside of your house, somewhere that you really like on the inside of your house. It could be your bedroom or your lounge room. And if you want to include people in there, you can. Okay. So there might be, you might see your family in there, your friends, or there might be neighbours. So it's entirely up to you. It could be inside or outside. And give us a bit of detail about what you might see there where you live. Once again, think about how it makes you feel, this place. You can use different colours. Yeah. I mean, my house isn't really purple, but I'm making it purple anyway. Oh, purple house, that's lovely. Yeah. Mine's a kind of orange colour. I'm drawing the bricks, but I'm kind of drawing them very quickly. I'm not worrying too much about how they look. There we go. Okay. Did you draw Glenn? Well, I drew, while Emily's finishing her drawing, I'm just going to show you. I drew my house, which is kind of like a kind of warehouse area in Northcote uh, in Victoria and I've got some people down here that are walking down the street out the front um, and we can often see them from the window we sometimes wave hello to our neighbours from up in these windows up here and I'm just going to write that description just in this little box here. Gosh I'm taking a bit longer sorry. That's okay. Well I've drawn I've drawn the outside of my house too, but I've drawn the back of my house because oh. um, I have a courtyard back there, which I really love to spend time in. And so I've drawn that. And so there is, so that's our kind of back door there. And there's oh. ivy that grows all over the back of the house, which makes me very happy because it's lovely and green. That looks great. And I've got lots of plants that I grow and there's a, a brick wall and that's our little window um, into our study. At the so the plants house. can look in the window and see you study? They can, yeah. Well, oh, very nice. nice. So I'm going to write a sentence about that. So as soon as Emily's finished with that sentence that she's writing, we're going to move on to one last piece of paper. Is it okay if I wrote two sentences? Two sentences is okay. If you can fit it in the box, that's fine. Okay. I wrote, this is the back of my house. It has lots of plants. Perfect. And now we're going to get a uh, pencil again and draw the cross to make four sections one last time. Another cross. In this top section here, we're going to draw an animal. Now, this can be anything at all. It could be a pet of yours. It could be a pet of someone else's. It could be something that you saw in the zoo. It could be something that you saw um, in a tree. Something you've seen in the back garden. Like a bug. Yeah. Or a bird. All right, jump in. Hmm. I'm drawing an animal that I uh, saw whilst camping. Oh. Um, and it was waddling around, kind of. Waddling? Yeah, kind of, I guess. Um, around the campground, looking for food. Did you give it any food? Uh, no, apparently we weren't meant to feed this particular animal. But so we just looked at it from afar and it was very, very 
cute. But also looked a little bit drunk. <laughs> I'm drawing a thing that I have seen in my backyard. I've seen lots of them actually, which is really lovely. Um, and it's funny because my mother bought me a little ornament of this thing and I put it in a plant and then the next day there was a real version of it in wow. the same plant. I know. That's amazing. Yeah. And they're really pretty. But they're very small. But I've made this one quite big. Great. And now once you've finished drawing your animal, we want you to describe it in the box next to it. So I've done this wombat here. And I'm going to talk about that wombat in this box right next to it. This is the wombat I saw camping. I wish it was my pet. <laughs> Well, I drew a ladybug. That's great. And so I wrote, this is a ladybug I found in my backyard. Beautiful. All right, so All right. in this final box, down below your first picture on this page, we're going to get you to draw something that you would like to do. So it could be something really big, like a dream that you have, I want to be an astronaut mm. or a marine biologist or a rock star. Or it could be something really like small or kind of everyday, like I want to bake some cookies this afternoon. Mm. Or it could be something you really long for, like I want to see my grandma and give her a hug. Or I want to see my mum, but she lives in Queensland, so I can't visit her right now. So it can be something big or it can be something small. So something that you would like to do. Okay. So you're gonna draw that in your final box. Okay, where do I even start? There's so I know, many right? things There's I would like to do right now. I know. Um, mm. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna go for something fairly small. yourself in this picture doing the thing. Swimming, because I love to swim. Oh, so, swimming is the best. And I've even included my uh, orange swimming cap and my goggles. And so I'm going to write in the box next to it, I want to go for a swim. Simple as that. I've drawn myself here um, watching a band play music. Oh, nice. And we're just um, maybe at an outdoor venue. Um, there's someone with a guitar, someone with a keyboard, someone with some drums over here. And I'm just going to write about that in the box next to it. So now you should have four pictures and four little stories to go with those pictures. So each of these pictures tells quite a detailed story about you, doesn't it? That's so, right. Where you live, what you love doing, your favourite place in your neighbourhood, uh, the kind of animals that you observe or love, and things that you hope for. So there might be somebody in your house, in your family, or one of your friends who would like to hear these stories as well. And now we're going to talk you through how to upload your drawings onto Playable Web. 
so that we can turn them into an online gallery. It all already kind of looks like a bit of a gallery, doesn't it? It does. With your frames. You could put these on the wall. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You could and, add more to them. And those descriptions are kind of like the little plaque that you get next to a, a yeah. picture in an art gallery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you've finished your drawing, you can take a photo on a smartphone and upload it to playableweb.com. Now there's a link in the bio just below this video and that will take you to the upload page. Once we get your drawings, we will add them to our online gallery at www.playableweb.com so you can check them out there. We'll be adding new drawings from children across the city of Melton all through the year until the exhibition in October. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing your amazing creations. Bye.